Amen. Please be seated. This weekend is the third Sunday of Advent. In the church, it's also called Pink Candle Sunday. Similar to Lent, there's one Sunday in Advent and one in Lent also where we can relax a bit from our Advent waiting and Lenten observances and we could sort of take a step back and take a break and maybe have a little bit of a celebration. And I'm asked a lot, what does the pink candle mean? We know the color of season, we know the color of Advent and Lent, We've got some blue, purple, and we know that they're about waiting and preparing and penitence and spending some time on, on reflection. But I really didn't know the answer for what does the pink, pink really mean. So I went out searching for that deep theological answer to that. And I went to an older, wiser priest. And I said to him, you know, what, what is that really about, the Pink Candle Sunday? And he basically said to me, well, that Sunday is just not quite as purple as the other Sundays. <laughs> so the only answer really is, is that we're given this one Sunday in Advent like we're given in Lent to take a break and perform celebrations like we can do a wedding and a baptism on these particular Sundays, and we get to wear pink, get to wear pink. And we also get to put ourselves in preparation for Christmas and enter into some of the joy that we're waiting for. So I want to tell you a story about a woman named Alice. Alice was to bake a cake for the church cake sale, but she forgot to do it until the last minute. She baked an angel food cake, and when she took it out of the oven, the middle had fallen flat. And she said, now what am I going to do? I don't have time to bake another cake. So she looked around the house for something to sort of boost it up, to build up the center of the cake, and she found what she needed in the bathroom, a roll of toilet paper. So she took a roll of toilet paper, and she put it in the center of the cake, and then she covered it with icing, and the finished product looked beautiful. It looked beautiful. So she rushed it to the church. But before she left the house, Alice gave her daughter some money with specific instructions to be at the church the minute that bake sale starts and buy that cake back. <laughs> so the daughter arrived at the sale, and that beautiful-looking cake had already been sold. So Alice was beside herself, but really there was nothing she could do about it, and she thought, well, at least my name's not on it. The next day, Alice was invited to a friend's home for bridge and lunch. <laughs> After the game, a fancy lunch was served, and to top it off, dessert came, and there was presented this beautiful cake that Alice had baked. And she started to get out of her chair and rush to the host and say, you know, tell her what happened, that you can't serve the cake. But before she could even get on her feet, one of the guests said, oh my gosh, what a beautiful cake. And Alice slumped back in her chair. When she heard the hostess, who was a prominent church member, say, thank you, I baked it myself. <laughs> That's it, sermon over. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love telling that story. It's a great, it's funny, it's light, and this is like a really good weekend for that. It's a good weekend on this pink candle Sunday weekend. But there's another reason I share it with you. I share it with you because for me, I have learned a continuing lesson from this story. What God tries to teach us, a lesson about God wants for us to be who we are, where we are, and that's what he intends us to be. In other words, God wants us to be as we came out of the oven. Our struggle to be perfect, to work hard, to be the best at something, sometimes when we get wrapped up in that, we end up being that roll of toilet paper in the middle of a cake, and then we just try to cover it up to make it look good, to make it look wonderful. I want to deviate from the gospel this morning this gospel about John the Baptist, and talk more personally about living our lives as Christians, where we are and who we are. I've lived alone now for almost 26 years. As soon as I graduated from seminary, I moved into the curate's apartment at St. Thomas Church in Mamaroneck, New York, and I took everything I owned and put it in my brown Ford along with my little dog, a toy poodle named Toto, 
and we moved out. I moved out of my parents' house 26 years ago. And since then, I've become very independent. And you get very used to that. You get used to the independence. You get used to living on your own, taking care of things yourself. And you really don't need to ask for any help. After all, as a strong, independent woman, I don't need to ask for help. Well, two things have happened recently. Hurricane Irma hit, and I realized that I was living in a section that was under a mandatory evacuation, and I had to get out. I lived on a bottom floor condo, and I couldn't get to the airport because it was closed, and I really couldn't get on the road, and I had to ask for help. And I was invited to somebody's home who lived on a second floor, and I rode out the storm with them. And it was really great. It was a blessing to not be alone, to be able to ride that out with somebody else. And then a little over two weeks ago, I had this emergency gallbladder surgery. That wasn't planned. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I had to pick up the phone and ask for help. I share this with you as a witness because both of these occasions have reminded me over and over again what God asks of us, what God asks of me. He's basically saying, practice what you preach. Each morning, through our faith, we put ourselves in God's hands because we don't know what that day is going to bring. And how often have I said from this pulpit or somewhere else, if there's somebody you love, if there's somebody you care about, tell them, tell them right now. Don't wait. What are you waiting for? Tell them. Tell them what they mean to you. And I feel compelled to preach about that. As a priest, it's a humbling experience to realize that we preach a lot about letting go and let God take over. Yet when it comes to ourselves, and I don't just mean me, this is a similar problem for many people, that when we have to ask for help ourselves, we're not so great at that. As human beings, it's a common issue. It's a common problem. It's not as easy as we think to just let go and ask for help, especially when all you're able to do in return is smile and say thank you. There's nothing deep or theological or even wise about this, but it's real. It's absolutely real. A Christian community is built upon care for each other. In caring for each other, we are caring for Christ. After one of the hurricanes, I read a short little news story about a coastal community that had named themselves the Camp Coast Care Center. And the article was speaking to one of the clergy people that had arrived there to help with hurricane relief. And he talked about the volunteers, and he talked about the relief effort. But then the priest talked about gathering every Sunday with the volunteers and those who lived there for church in a small little church that was in that area. And he said, you know, when we gather on Sundays, nobody complains about the color of the rug in the chancel or a misspelled word in the bulletin. The focus is on the actual work of the church and about bringing God's presence into other people's lives through labor, time, energy, and most of all, faith and love. That is what church is supposed to be, first and foremost. It's a place, it's important, it's holy, and it's shared. It's what Mother Teresa says. God doesn't require us to be perfect. He only asks that we try. And if Alice, if you think about it, if Alice had taken that cake out of the oven and looked at it and just covered it up with some frosting, forgetting about the toilet paper, put the frosting in there, it probably might not have looked that great, but I bet it tasted really good. And think of all the anxiety and worry and stress that she would have saved. God doesn't require us to be perfect. He only asks that we try. Things happen. We get sick. Hurricanes come. Those we love get busy. They forget to call. Friends get sick. Friends die. People we love leave us. Sometimes maybe this year, the people that we usually spend the holidays with aren't coming this year. Hard things happen. We can't always boost ourselves up with a roll of toilet paper and just cover it up and pretend that everything is okay and everything is perfect because really the only perfect thing that exists is Jesus Christ. 
Yet, for whatever reason, it seems to take an emergency or a major event to remind ourselves about that. All of us have been through an emergency, whether a natural one or a, a death or an illness. And when we reach out and we ask for help, it draws us a little bit closer. This parish continues to grow and continues to become a family. And no matter, no matter how much it changes and grows, it remains a family. And I have learned through these couple of events what an absolute joy and blessing it is to be a part of this family. And I tell you this today, and I'm going to repeat it over and over and over again because there is absolutely no reason to wait for an emergency. I want to thank everybody for all your help and your prayers. It wasn't a very big deal. It was just a gallbladder. But it put me in a place of learning again that lesson over and over again about living in the moment, living with what God gives us, living in that moment where we want to remind the people in our lives what they mean to us. Even to the point, and I don't really quite remember this, but the friend that was with me, in the hospital before I went to the operating room, he says I said this. I probably did, knowing me. I said, grabbed his hand and said, in case I forget to tell you or something happens, I'm so glad you're here and I love you very much. I think he laughed, but I can't remember. <laughs> and it was a lot to me about Advent. It's what Advent is. It's not always about the pink candle. The blue of Advent is part of our lives, the waiting, the preparing. So let's ask ourselves this year to just stop and pause a moment longer in this season and stay in Advent just a, just a little bit longer. With all of our imperfections and sometimes needing help, we're not going to stay in the blue of Advent that much longer. And let us rejoice knowing that in those moments, we're continuing to become a family. And the beauty of any family is that no matter how it comes out, no matter how a cake comes out of the oven, we accept it because we know that that cake has been made with love and with time and with care. And the same is true for us, that however we are, we are created by God and we are created out of love, with imperfections, out of care, taken with time, and above all, with grace, and we are who we are, however we come out. Amen.